Next fly we're gonna tie is a tarpon fly. And what I'm gonna tie is a lefty's deceiver because uh, the guides here at El Pescador Lodge like lefty's deceiver for tarpon, particularly the past couple of days. Um, and they like a white one, a little red or something. So um, I'm gonna tie a pink and white Lefty Deceiver. The Deceiver is really a, a type of pattern. You can tie it any color you want. It's more in the shape and the way the fly is constructed. Um, there's no real standard pattern. The Deceiver is anything you want it to be as long as it's tied in these particular steps. So I'm going to tie a pink and white Lefty Deceiver, which uh, should be a good tarpon fly on Savannah Flat at El Pescador Lodge. Now the first thing we start with is a 1-0 hook, 1-0 or 2-0 hook. Put that in the vise, there we go. So the first thing we do is cover the hook shank, start the thread all the way to the back, right to where the bend starts to tip over. And then you're gonna take anywhere from four to six white saddle hackles, and you want the saddle hackles to be about the same shape and size. You want these hackles to have fairly wide bases fairly thick stems at the base. So it takes, it's worth your, worth your uh, time to, to pick through. And I'm gonna try to find six nice wide ones. And then I'm, I'm gonna lay them down on the table, three to a side, and I'm gonna line them up. So there's three. I'm gonna line these up so that the tips are even. And all, the curvature is all facing the same way and I'm going to set those aside. Then I'm going to pick three more, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other side, and lay these down on the table and line them up. All right. And there's two ways of putting these bunches together. One is with concave sides together so that they're cupped. That gives you a slimmer fly that doesn't breathe as much. The other way is to put the convex sides together so that the feathers flare out. For most patterns, you want the concave sides together. For tarpon, you want a fly that breathes and swims, so I'm gonna put the concave sides together so that the feathers splay out from each other and give it a better swimming action in the water, give it a pulsing motion. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna line up both bunches you can tie these in one at a time, or you can tie them in together. I'm going to tie them in all together. I've got those, one side, got the other side. Going to line them up, and that's pretty good. Now, the important thing with a deceiver is to make sure that when you tie these in, you tie it in, you tie in some web, and you tie them in at the base here. So I'm going to come way in here and like so, and I'm gonna lay these on top of the hook shank, and I'm gonna come down, straight down, and pinch and secure them in place. Take about three wraps. Secure these guys in place and take a look. And they look like they're flaring pretty well. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to be relatively symmetrical. So you get them where you want them, and then you continue forward, wrapping over these butts, binding down all that fluff. I'm gonna bring the butts up, cut them here. So I've got some room to put a head on there and put my bucktail up front. Now I'm going to go back and forth and make it a smooth body. Okay, so now we've got a relatively smooth body. Not too worried about it because it's going to be covered up with the bucktail collar. All right, the next thing you do is you turn the fly upside down in the vise. And you put on your belly first. And I'm going to get some nice, stiff, coarse bucktail white, cut it off the tail. I'm going to pull all the fine hairs out of the base, clean it. If I have any real long ones that don't fit in, I'll pull them out too. Now the important thing in a deceiver 
is to make sure that the bucktail extends beyond the bend of the hook and kind of melds into those feathers. Two reasons, one, it gives your fly a better shape, and two, is that it helps keep the fly from fouling around the bend of the hook. So, we're gonna pinch this bucktail very tightly and pull it down, secure it with about a half a dozen wraps, very tight, tight as you can get them, and then cut it off at a little bit of an angle, start to form that neat head, And then we'll come and wrap forward a little bit, like so, and then back. The next thing you're going to do is tie in a red throat. You can use crystal flash. You can use flashaboo. Helps to wet this stuff to keep it behaving. Square it off. And Lefty Cray has also found that you want a short, fairly wide throat. You don't want this to extend way back into the wing, so you just want a little, little suggestion of gills there. So you make it short and fairly wide, and you just tie that in right there. And that's it, just a little suggestion of red there in the throat, and I'm gonna cut all the rest of this off. Like so. And then bind it down, bind down the ends. Tightly. Now you can turn the fly over, right side up. Now you're going to tie bucktail on top, and the, the ideal is to have it encircle the whole hook, so you're going to let it kind of roll over the top so that it covers the whole hook. Another bunch of bucktail, about the same, maybe a little bit smaller bunch than the first. Clean it the same way, clean all the junk short hairs and fuzz and stuff from the base of the bucktail. And then if you got any fibers that don't behave, get rid of them. And then you want to make that the same length as the bottom bunch. And then again, I'm going to kind of let this roll on top of the hook so that covers, really covers the whole 360 degrees of the hook shank between the top and the bottom. Very tight turns. Trim the butts at a little bit of an angle. Cover up the butts, come forward to the eye of the hook. So you're gonna get that nice tapered head. And then finally, we're gonna put some pink bucktail over the top of this. Probably wanna go, if you can, down into the base of a bucktail, into this part here. The hair is stiffer there and better for deceivers than up here where it's fairly fine. Save that for trout streamers and things like that. Clean the butts, same as you did. Clean the ends. Straighten it out. Clean the butts. That looks good. Same length, maybe a little bit longer than the bottom bunch. See how nicely that bucktail blends into the wing. And then... Pinch wrap that on top. Okay, if this bucktail flares a little bit, you want a nice wide profile on your deceivers. Cut that bucktail at a little bit of an angle. Bring it down a little bit and then finish your head. And you want to wrap tightly back and forth until you get a nice smooth head and all the bucktail is covered up. And then you whip finish, and your deceiver is done. I'm going to whip finish by hand. Use my dubbing needle to tighten it up. And then a lot of people put eyes on their deceivers. So we'll get some head cement and do a coat of head cement on the top. Good to let that head cement come back into the hairs a little bit so that they they stay put. And then what I'm going to do is wait till this wait till this gets a little bit tacky. Turn the vise a little bit so that the head cement flows evenly. It doesn't take long for head cement to set. And then when it's almost dry, 
Put a couple eyes on there. Do there. And then what I'll do is give this a coat or two of head cement or epoxy after this dried a little bit so that it covers the eyes and protects them so they don't fall off. Now that is a pink and white Lefty's Tarpon Deceiver. It'll breathe pretty well in the water. It'll give you some pretty good action with those splayed saddle hackles. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads. Thank you.